Hi everyone, this is Jason here from Nathaniel. In this concluding part of our series on all things rhythm as we've called it, we are basically going to look at some advanced things which people do in the field of rhythm. First of all, how time signatures could be stacked with each other. That's quite interesting. And then how to generate two time fields like you could be dividing by two and then also dividing by three, you know, uh, and creating these recurring actions. Accents, uh, also what musicians popularly call as the dotted feel. So all of this is again coming or hailing from the continuing flow chart of mu of the rhythm, rhythmic interest. When we hear a song, we hear the song bare minimum, feel the pulse, move to the music, see how your body is reacting. Is it swaying? Is it going straight? Very very important. For you as a listener, forget the fact that you are a musician when you're first listening to a song. When you're first listening to the song, you just listen to it like any other person who enjoys music, which is arguably going to be anyone on earth. I, I don't know anyone who doesn't like music. I, I'm, I don't know if you do. That'll be very weird. I wouldn't want to meet such a person. But anyway, so you have the idea of the pulse. You feel the pulse. Get your body to react, then you divide the pulse by how much or rather before you divide, the pulse will kind of cycle itself in a time signature. Then we looked at dividing the pulse in, in, the, in the second part, divide by 2, divide by 3, divide by 4. And then we also looked at the ability of feeling that division in different ways, swing versus straight then we looked at triplets and then we also looked at building patterns and accented phrases patterns are nothing but you know you divide it by something and then you knock off something and then you get a pattern like a gallop we saw in the last video that one or a triplet kind of like an indian feel for a triplet something like that where the beat is actually divided by three, but what you're doing in that division is like a subset. And we also mentioned divide more and play less, which is a very important rhythmic mantra to have when you're playing music as much as possible. Okay, so in this lesson, we'll just look at some of the fancier things musicians do. But come to think of it, as you heard in the intro performance, you'll realize that I didn't play very awkward or strange music. I played quite popular, at least I think it sounded fairly popular in, in the performance. So you find these things called polyrhythms, dotted fields, odd meter. You find these tough, weird, out of reach concepts generally uh, used by pop musicians, used by movie composers, you know, for very epic themes, very normal themes. So it's good to learn a bit of that. And that's what I'm going to show you in this lesson. Before we get started, it'll be great if you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you haven't already hit that bell, very important to hit the bell, like the video, it'll be awesome. Leave us a comment with something you'd like to learn or what you thought about this entire lesson series. And this is part three. If you haven't already, do check out part one and part two. There'll be a lot more insights there in the demonstrations of rhythm. Okay, let's move forward. The first thing I'd like to show you, let me first demonstrate it and then try to bring it back to whatever I did. So... Okay, so if you see my left hand, my left hand is sort of creating a 3 by 4, isn't it? 1, 2, 3, 1, but the right hand could think like it's a 4 by 4, maybe. Right? It could either be... One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Now, you could call this a polyrhythm or give it a fancy word if you want, but actually it's just an extension of what we did in the last video where I'm dividing by four. 1e e and a 2e e and a 3e e and a 1e e and a 2e e and a 3e e and a 1e e and a 2e e and a 3e e and a 1e e and a 2 and I'm doing 1e e and a 2e e and a 3e e and a 
so 1e and a 2e and a 3e and i'm just hitting all those divisions and never repeating the occurrence of the one or the e or the and or the a uh. in, in other words i'm not hitting one two i'm not doing e e e e i'm not doing the e's neither am i doing the and 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 or i'm not doing it repeatedly like that i'm doing it basically in groups or in phrases of three so one two three is the time signature dividing this by 4 daga 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 dividing it's a it's a meter of 3 but i'm dividing the meter by 4 units 1e and a 2e and a 3 and a 1e and a 2e and a 3 and a 1e and a 2 now here again i'm going to divide my performance by 3 even though the beat is divided by 4 so 1e and a 2e and a 3e 1e and a 2e and a 3e and a um a 1 2 so it is kind of gives you an illusion that it is 4 so and another way to look at it is you have three beats and you have to kind of look at a four beat structure as well so if you look at a maths chapter called lcm right the lcm of 3 and 4 least common multiple is 12 so you need to write 12 beats at the bare minimum if you want 3 and 4 to to unite with each other at some point where will they unite after 12 will they unite before between the 12 no so how do you interact 3 and 4 you could probably look at them in that sense lcm 3 4 is yeah uh, 12 3 4s are 12 as well so you can write it as 1e and a 2e and a 3e and a rather than 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 which is annoying to read so 1e and a 2e and a 3e and a 1e and a 2e and a 3e and a 1e and a 2e and a 3e and 2 3 4 1 2 so you get this so if you think about this as you know let's take some like edm sounding stuff Well, Coldplay were to do songs on three, maybe it would sound something like this. I guess. So, what happened here? So, I divide by four, but accent in threes. One e and a two e and a three e. So, it gives you that exact uh, four one with the accent. So, the accent hit points actually become a new time signature, which is visualized as four. So, one might argue that four got generated or born from three. right so 3 is your base value which you feel i am still imagining it as a 3 by 4 or a 3 beat per bar cycle in my mind it's still a 3 4 but i'm getting that additional polyrhythm now if you wear the shoes of really talented and you know experienced drummers they may argue that each limb could do a different time signature which is true and the chapter of uh, lcm and ratios and combining the four limbs could even apply now i am not going to be able to show you that because hey i have only two limbs and it's really tough okay even this is tough so you need to practice this really hard um it's easier said than done lcm is a very easy chapter in maths but to apply it in music is a is a little bit of a beast if you think about it so um, now let's say i want to divide by 2 i want to divide the beat by 2 so i go 1 and 2 and 3 and 1 and 2 and 3 and it's still a 3 by 4 so i'll do 1 and 2 and now i don't have the e's and the e's so maybe you could start like that you know divide by 2 and do over a 3 by 4 song 1 2 3 1 2 very pop chords feel i'm getting like a th- two feel so you can say it's a 3 2 polyrhythm while the 
three and four working together, you have to think dagger, 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 dagger. You have to think in terms of sixteenth note. So that'll be. If you flip your mind around and say, "Okay, I don't want to keep feeling threes. Why can't I feel normal four by four music or uh, two by four music and feel it in even beats?" In the earlier demonstrations, I felt it in beats of three. So now you let's say you take your left hand and now you think triplets. Okay, but you go one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and in the left hand. One and a two and one, one bum 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 one. Doesn't it feel different the moment I tell you to count one and a two and a ta na na ta na na ta na na ta na na. Now you go ta na 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 one. Now it feels more like a four by four. Dun 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 dun. to pop could even assume it's a triplet and then play around even further okay then you could do like a 1 and a 2 and a 3 and a 4 and a go all the way to 4 so becomes a normal 4 by 4 head is now moving like that so you, again polyrhythms or any rhythm whatever you want to call it never loses the pulse it all started with the pulse it's going to just always have the pulse okay so that's about your polyrhythmic feel you could also do something like you know you combine polyrhythms were combining two time signatures by superimposing them with the same amount of time for both bars of uh, cycles of 3 and 4 but what if you want to tell yourself okay i want to make a song where a little bit of music is on 7 and then the next little bit of music would be on 8 so now you may argue okay that's a 15 by 8 right but as a musician sometimes 15 is a huge number you know so you may want to divide it a little bit more so if i do something like now what i did there was 7 meeting 9 Now if I do one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven eight one dum bum 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 ba da da dum, you can actually start combining any number with any number. Let me just give it a go. Haven't tried this before. Let's just try seven meeting six, right? Five six seven one two three four five six one two right. So a lot of progressive music. If you like progressive rock or you know heavy metal, you'll find they do. Three four five six seven one two three. Three four five six seven one two three. You can get like a guitar riff. You know, imagining this being a heavy metal guitar. Three four five six seven one two three four five six one two three four five six. Your drummer will be very happy with rhythms like this, or maybe not. Three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, right? Or if you apply this in a in a Celtic context, uh, there, there's a song of mine called uh, "Jellyfish," which which I've released in my last album. Go something like. So I honestly don't know how I'm counting this. I 
I actually told my bandmates it's a 4x4 four four, and then they also thought it was a 4x4. Four four. Then we actually tried to play it and it was not working. A normal drum groove did not work for this song. So uh, incidentally, it was not 4x4, four four, maybe something else. Let's try and see what this song is. I actually forgot. I think it's... Maybe 31 or something. 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So you have a cycle of 7 plus 8 equals to 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then I repeat the tune, sort of. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then it ends with a 9. So 7 plus 8, 15. 15 plus 7, 22. 22 plus 9 equals to 31. Now, do you think uh, a composer would have needed to think of this before making the song? I honestly don't think so. At least I did not. So, if you get really good with odd time signatures, if you get very good with accents, if you get used to maybe the dotted feel, which I'm going to show you next, you're inevitably going to do things like this. And also music like this believe it or not even though it sounds like a folk song you know or maybe like a celtic folk kind of song i am not a very celtic musician you know i don't i, I do listen to a lot of celtic music but uh, growing up i listened to a lot of progressive music progressive rock bands like dream theater rush maybe some Pink Floyd as well. So those artists are, you know, rock artists. But they do a lot of these odd meter groupings of notes. So a great way to understand these di more difficult concepts in music is to first enjoy it, right? And the only way you can enjoy it is to listen to such music, right? I have taught odd meter to students who are just dream theatre fans. They've just listened to dream theatre for so long and it's so easy to tell them, I don't even have to write it down. It, it just happens. I just have to say, okay, do it this way, kind of work. So a lot of these advanced topics of music and even the simple topics of music require listening. You're not going to get this with a book, pen and paper unless you have heard stuff. After you've heard it, then you start writing everything down. So it's important to listen to some of these great musicians. Okay, last but not least, I wanted to introduce you to the dotted feel, which is a very common way of uh, counting music, especially folk music, especially rock music. You count it in a dotted way. What a dotted note essentially does, again, it's just whatever you divide by two or four, the dotted concept is going to be like, I don't care, I will go in threes. Okay, that's pretty much in a nutshell how dotted feel works because the dot adds one and a half times the note value. So if the note value was one, the dotted value is going to be one and a half. That will be three quavers or three eighth notes. If the dotted value is um, a dotted half note, that's going to be three beats, right? Which we don't use very often. If the dotted value is a dotted quaver, it's going to be half plus half of half which is uh, essentially 1.75, I would imagine, right? Or 0.75, sorry. Yeah, so if you do so, the dotted feel, let me demonstrate it to you. And it's something, hopefully in this video, you, you enjoy or get inspired by, because it may take some time to crack it. But if you like all this stuff, do leave me a, a thumbs up or a comment and let me know, you know, what you liked and I'll try to make specific lessons on each of these topics with good exercises, you know. In this series, I'm just trying to present you all things rhythm. So, but I will definitely move forward with a lot of exercises, a lot of practical examples for a variety of genres. Okay, so the dotted feel is something like this. You go, if this is your pulse, And a three e and a four e and a one e and a two. So what you do is, if you divide by four, this is almost like a U two guitar delay. That's another way. If you listen to rock music, their guitar delay will all tung 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 tung. It'll just go on and on in dotted. So it just goes on one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and it just goes on. Right? 
right? Mm. One might argue it could also be a polyrhythm, but try to, if I explain it with the left hand, you may feel it even better. Just taking a simple up and down motion. Think like that. Now you hear the bass. One e and tough to count. One e and a two e and a three e and this will be your normal pulse. This will be dividing by two. It's nothing great, really. Then you do dotted. Very rock, very EDM as well. It's used a lot. Very Latin as well. If you take this with a chord. pulse how lazy that sounds right so i call this actually a dotted pulse where you feel it as dotted you know so even if you take like the the world's most famous song So dotted feel, well, maybe you can't keep playing dotted notes. It will never resolve. The dotted feel is aimed at not resolving in a 4 by 4 scenario. But if you just use a few dotted notes and then eventually resolve, you can treat it also like an accent. And it's sort of like ting, 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 ta, ting, ting, ting. Tha, like resolve it at the end. Right, guys? So in this lesson, we've looked at polyrhythms. We've looked at odd meter or polymeter as well where you combine different time signatures together i've given you as many illustrations as i could think of in this lesson period then we capped it off by looking at the dotted field so in conclusion we've just done this series to kind of give you all the ways to appreciate musical rhythm and all the things which you will need to observe as a learner and the first thing i would like to say at the beginning of this conclusion is the fact that you need to listen to more music so listen to a variety of music um, another suggestion when you listen to stuff, don't listen to it just because of the language. You can listen to it with, with a language you don't know or listen to instrumental music, you know, which doesn't even have lyrics. So listen to a variety of music and with any song you listen to, have a weekly average of maybe 10 songs or 5 songs or whatever your time schedule permits. And when you listen to it, have a pen and paper. Listen to it with a little bit of purpose or respect for the music. Don't just listen to it in a laid-back manner. That's not what a musician does. The, the song which you're listening to is education. You can't listen to a piece of music and relax, you know. It's the same thing like a aspiring whatever, anything, an aspiring artist or a movie maker. They are not going to watch movies like normal people. Yes, they will. They will still enjoy it. But deep down, they are looking at how did that person make that thing, right? So as a musician, when you're listening to songs, pen and paper out, forget the piano. You just need a pen and paper and your ear. So what are we trying to listen for in conclusion? The pulse, the underlying force of the song. If you do not feel the pulse, please do not move to all the other steps. It's going to be very difficult for you. Get the pulse, get that into your nervous system. It has to be there. After the pulse, the time signature. Sometimes the time signature just comes very obviously, like four or three, or it may be odd like seven. After which, we try and look at the phrasing, the accents, how you divide the beat rather before that. Are you dividing by 2, dividing by 3, dividing by 4? Are you swinging it? And then you set across a time grid. And after that, you accent stuff. 
you create phrases and then the whole divide more play less concept where you divide but you don't have to play everything so hit those accented phrases and in this part the concluding part we've looked at a few advanced things as we call them which are polyrhythms polymeters dotted fields and so on there'll be a lot more uh, lessons on rhythm on our channel rhythm is one subject which i really love and i myself keep learning as much as i can uh, as a student myself right so i hope i've shared some of these insights and i hope if not anything at least you're inspired by the topic or the world of rhythm and uh, you can listen to music more and more in the future hopefully with a more deeper perspective like what is actually going on in that song and what is making me dance why am i dancing this way versus that way you know that's because of the maths behind music deep down rhythm has to be maths and very maths heavy and after you played really well then the emotions start kicking in so music has to first be played very well and very tight and very patiently when you learn it and then eventually the emotion and the passion and the expression right guys again this is jason here from nathaniel if you haven't already do hit the subscribe button the bell icon or the bell button uh, give the video a like share the video with all your friends on your own channels and uh, what else can you do yes all of these lessons are supplemented with our handwritten notes which are available on the patreon channel so do head over there as well and learn along with the patreon notes it will really help uh, everything is handwritten and i've written it for making this lesson a lot more understandable so patreon subscribe share the video leave us a comment very important to hear from you all cheers and catch you in the next one